Dear Life Warriors, living and surviving are two different things. Today's featured guest is Carl Gray, founder of Young, Gifted, and Black Entrepreneurial Awards. Please give a warm welcome to Carl Gray. Dear Life Warriors, it's me, Shar, your favorite corporate life coach, and I am excited. I'm talking to Carl Gray. He's back. And this time, well, he is the founder, let me just say that, of the Young, Gifted, and Black Entrepreneur Awards, but he's also king of networking and branding. And I wanted him to come on and share some of his tips. Let's talk about why it's important for you to have a really strong brand. Where does that begin? How to actually get there? And why is networking, even in a time of COVID, still very, very important? So I am lacking in that area. So I am calling in the expert. Carl Gray, welcome to the show. <laughs> so Carl is well. <laughs> You're in your New York Yankee state of mind today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. I love it. It's all part of the brand. It's all part know? of the brand. Wherever I go in the world. You will always find me with a Brooklyn or a New York baseball cap that I always say, wherever you go, you're going to find somebody from New York or Brooklyn. Yes. I don't care about the other boroughs. <laughs> well, I'm other boroughs, you know, we love you, but we are some Brooklyn people. Brooklyn. It is what it is, you know. I still love rep my, Brooklyn. So I represent, you know, it was so funny. I was... Um, in Dallas the other day, visiting my father for his 85th and Thanksgiving. Oh, and I was in the Kroger um, supermarket chain. So one of the workers um, saw me and he said, hey, I'm a Yankee fan, you know? And I said, yeah, I'm a New York fan. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, what do you mean? You don't like the Yankees? I said, I love them all. Anything New York, so um, <laughs> let's just let's just keep it. So we was on that whole. Um, I'm trying to sell him on the brand of New York. He's 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 busy stuck on Yankee. Uh, on Yankee, but that that's what you have to look at when you talk about brand management. You know, when you look at a Yankee um, hat or a symbol or an icon or a logo, it represents you and. Yeah. One of the things I tell people all the time when it comes down to branding, you are your brand, right? How you present yourself, whether it's from the fashion side of the house or whether it's from, you know, I have the Mr. Gray Casino thing yeah. that I do. It's all about the elements that you put into your brand that sells your, your process Yep. Your, your your product, it's how you come across. Right. You no. Know? Right. Like a, a lot. I, I'll give you a good idea. One good thing is like when I talk about Mr. Great Casino, right? A lot of people don't understand that I did not create that platform to really open a kitchen. If you, it actually, looks like you did. <laughs> yes. But I actually created it. And this is just to tell you how I positioned it without even knowing that that's where it was going to go. Right. Was that my mom, you know, God rest her soul. She passed away last year. But prior to all of this, when my mom retired over the years, right, my mother was always that Jamaican woman that, you know, big into cooking, big into taking care of the home. So. Over the years, she has baked black cake for every one of my brothers. So I'm the only one that will not get that opportunity, right? <laughs> but one of her desires when she finished her 35 or almost 40 years of working in um, as a nurse's aide, right? Uh -huh. And, you know, I had purchased the family home. That was now, they went and relocated to Texas in a, in a suburb, northern suburb of Dallas. She was going to look to do catering. Wow. You know, my mom has everything. When I go to the house, she has everything. And one of the key things that you will see is um, because she fell ill, 
she never got to do the catering experience. Aww. So, because she 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 was doing it, but you know, yeah. But the ingredients that she put in, right? Her style of creating her different cakes, the way in which um, she would, uh, you know, make certain flavors of cakes, make certain designs of cakes. It all represented her brand. Right. You know? When I created Mr. Great Casino, it was to really pay honor and homage to her Aww. as my matriarch. That's you know? Oh, I didn't know that. So okay. if you actually go to my Facebook or my Instagram and uh-huh. it says about Mr. Great, it will tell you this is a tribute to Miss Cynthia Gray for those days when she said, watch the pot. Turn on the fire, put some water in, hold the bowl. Right. It was it was that process that taught me when they say look and learn, you know? Right. So because did you open up a kitchen or are, are you catering now? Are you doing I've, that? I've done the catering thing with Mr. Great Casino. There's so many different things that have come from Mr. Great Casino. Yeah, because you got the pepper sauce, the hot sauce that I need in my life. Are you doing rum punch? Like I need everything because I have <laughs> sampled your stuff already. I know. I want that's it. why. That, that's why we call you Long Belly. I love it. <laughs> you know, there, I want it. There I is want no, it. There is a bottomless pit over there. You know, there is a fat girl, and no. Listen, no insult to the to to the to the big girls out there, but this girl can eat. <laughs> so let's not get it. Let's not get it twisted. And Peppa don't stop me either. <laughs> stopping you, you know. And but that was the beauty of it is that that transference of energy and learning from my mom. Yeah. Taught me how to create, and it was a simply like I said, it was a platform just to to just pay homage to her. Right. But from it, it has opened possibilities. Yeah. I've done collaborative things with it. Right. Right. I have done. Um. Um situations in which uh you know people have asked me for recipes uh, uh, there's been so many little things that have come about from right. it right? right um i've looked into opening a um a restaurant i've looked into even using my platform as a kitchen for uber you know but one of the key things that I have to tell people when they look to do their brand, right? right? You have to do your due diligence in regards to where you're going to scale it and how you want to scale your brand. Okay. There is Scaling. That's the first thing. Is that first? Like, do you have to think about that before you even begin? Well, no, this is when, all right. So one is to identify what your brand is going to be like, right? Okay. And that could be through trial and error, right? You might go through some iterations of how you're going to improve and, you know, the design and look, you know, right. you yeah. may want to wear your this Yankee cap to the side because right. you're yeah. selling more of a <laughs> hip hop type of style, you know, right. Or you might just stay, you know, um, I, you know, Russell Simmons is one of the most awesome persons when it come to, hey, I'm going to go to the black tie with my baseball cap and a jacket and Adidas, you know, right. That's his style. That's his brand. But one of the very first key things that I tell people is put your ideas down on paper, right? Okay. Create that vision board if you need to do that, right? And have some direction as to what it is that you're trying to portray. What is it? If it's a product, how are you going to, you know, develop that product? Right. What does that product say about you or who you want to you know, your target audience in order to get that product to market and who is going to be the audience that you're trying to get to. Sometimes it's not your immediate audience that you may sell to. Right. You may need to go outside of that circle if you're going after that. Then there's another piece about placement, right? So, okay, put your ideas down on paper. Put your ideas on, create the vision. You have to create the vision. Okay. Right. Once you get the vision, you have to identify the elements that is going to make your brand. Right. Ingredients, the logos, the colors, 
the uh-huh. style, what is going to, when you put it all together in the pot and stir it up, right? We're going to use that cooking term. How does it make? You're going to have to, and, and I'm going to use the cooking terms here because you're going to want to taste your brand, meaning you got to sample it. You got to see how you season it. You're going to make it to where it makes sense for you. And you're going to take maybe sample steps. You're going to take baby steps, baby steps in order to bring it to market. What we call that is now um, a pilot per se. Okay. Right. Uh-huh. And you might pilot what you're doing for, and you decide where, where you got to go because it has to make sense because behind your brand, there are other elements that are coming into place, right? Right. Cost to do business, right? Um, what are you trying to, um, in, in the sense of, if it's a product, mm-hmm. what are your competitive, what is what are your competitors doing, yeah. right? Who are your competitors? Who, At least who identify who they are. Right. If, if you have none, okay, great. Better for you. But That's it's awesome because it's a wide open market. Wide open market. But you just have to find the people yeah. who want your brand, who yeah. want your product or service. See, that's the part I struggle with, to be honest, is the finding part. Well, like, well, here, you know, how so. How do we do that? How do we I do would, that? I would always recommend everyone take a marketing class, Mm -hmm. get some idea of what are the different types of marketing platforms that are out there Mm -hmm. and at least get your head wrapped around, you know, if you're not taking a master's class in marketing and sales management, right? Right. You can find training courses online that teaches you about different things to look at, Right. right? You may want to take a marketing class that explores the whole idea of, you know, product placement, right? Go into market, right? What, a, right? Looking at your overall sales forecasting, right? Mm-hmm. Um, how to, what's the what's the best word I look at? How to take your brand, right? And how do you package it? Packaging is right. very right. important. You know, there's, you know, I had a, um, a professor in college that says, if you took toilet paper, right, packaged it the right way and sold it to those who th- you sold it to them, like this is the best toilet paper because it's going to make it, it's all about your presentation, packaging, and your pitch. Very important on the pitch. pitch. The pitch. Right? Because when you're pitching to your room, and I say that you are your brand, you need, and, and this might even, you might, some of you guys may not think about it. If you're not a great speaker, right? Mm-hmm. You have one or two options to sell yourself. You could either find someone who can be the face of the brand. Right. Or you may have to take some training in taking speech classes, how to talk in front of an audience. Yeah. Because you have to sell this, you know, just hitting the keyboard just doesn't work anymore. Right. It is sometimes it's the door knocking sometimes, and we're going to segue into networking in a minute, but when you're creating your brand and you're identifying those key elements, the ingredients to your brand, right. Right. How you're packaging it, right? How is it coming across when you're bringing it in front of an audience for that, you know, that pilot feedback? You have to yeah, you need know. feedback, whether good, bad, or bad indifferent. Or, yeah, construct, and it's okay. See, a lot of people get the feedback and give up because they mm-hmm. got a negative response. No, that is an opportunity in my life, Warriors, to go make it better. Take mm-hmm. what you've mm-hmm. heard mm-hmm. and try and go implement or incorporate some of the foundations of what whoever said to you that you like. Mm-hmm. And if you are headstrong on the product that you have and you don't, you know, you don't have to take every advice, just the ones that make sense and mm-hmm. and, and it's true to you as your as your brand, like Carl is saying. So I'm glad you mentioned feedback feedback is feedback and failure are two very important things oh failure okay? 
Why? Don't fear failure. Embrace it. Every entrepreneur, when I, I've had symposiums, that is one of the key mottos. Do not fear failure. Those who fear failure, fear success. Yes, it goes hand, hand in hand. They go hand in hand because you must you must crawl before you walk. Like I said, there are baby steps. You're going to get knocked down. You got to retool. You got to come back to the table. It is a ongoing cycle. Yes. Right? And a lot of people, if you're just going to be frustrated, I'll give you a good example of one. My, my nephew, when he was in high school, from junior high through high school, right? My older brother, he was an awesome pitcher on his baseball teams. Oh, baseball. Wow. And was taking him around to AA leagues around the country, right? He got a full scholarship to a SUNY school. And when he got up there, guess what? What? He was not the only top player. <laughs> he was now going to sit on the bench. Sometimes your brand is going to sit on the bench. The bench. Ooh, <laughs> I like that. Okay. Are you feeling benched right now? So that might be a good thing. Get to the punchline, Carl. <laughs> so the, the key here is, right? He sat on the bench, but this is going to be, a, I'm going to say a little different of what he did. Yeah. Right. But it's also a key. For him, he felt he was so caught up that his he was such that top player all the time that when he came across other players that were either yes. senior or whatever, he was like, you know what? I don't want to do this no more. He, I'm That's how he handled his bench. But the key thing for him was he had a fallback. So for everyone that has a brand, make sure your plan, you have plan A, B, and C. Okay? Sometimes you could show off your brand and come back to it, right? Or you may come across things that, you know, you could see yourself dive into. But if you're going to continue to chase your dream, now, if he had continued to chase his dream, yeah, he would have took a position where he would sit back and learn whatever it is that he has to go through right. in that cycle and patience. Patience. Those who don't understand patience, you're going to kill yourself. Okay, let me jump in right here. I want, because you said so much that I really want the life warriors to get this message because that was powerful, by the way. That quote, sometimes your brand has to sit on the bench. Mm -hmm. And for us life warriors, what does sitting on the bench look and feel like? It feels like you're doing the work. And you're wondering why things are not moving or, you know, you're not flowing or you're not elevating like you thought you would be as quickly as you thought you would be. Second part of that that I got from that message is when you do start to elevate and you reach a whole new level, the players are looking a little different on the team. Mm -hmm. And all this time you might be thinking, oh, I, I'm great. I'm this, I'm awesome. And then you get to that level where you are now surrounded with some other great, awesome people. Mm -hmm. Don't let that make you feel less than. Mm -mm. You learn. You learn. You just you enter a, a, a room of some people that has some great qualities and some great knowledge and that you mm -hmm. might need. So tap into that. Don't Take your bench like Carl poor nephew did and, and said, I don't want to play anymore. No, now is the time to play. Right. I mean, but like I said, the good thing about it. the fact that he decided to, he, he said, hey, you know, pops, I'm going to forget the scholarship and I'm going to just fall back onto something else. Something else. Hey. That's fine. Sometimes you're going to change direction with your brand if you feel that at this particular juncture, right? Right. You, you 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 feel you've expended the energy and you want to try something new. There right. is nothing wrong with that, right? Keep going, I guess. Keep going. You 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 know, it's it's a it's a like I said, it's a continual process. Right. right? That was and good. Uh, your brand. The man, went, the man went into robotics. I'm not mad. What? what? Okay. He got pushed into something. Ooh, that's amazing. Yeah. But like I said, at 
you know, when you're focused on your brand and building your brand, the key thing is always make sure you have a plan in place. Plan. Proper plan it prevents poor performance. And I always wow. say add the um extra P at the end, which is prayer, right? You gotta put you gotta put your faith in the in 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 man above and let it be blessed, right? Yeah. That's one of the key things. You know, I remember when I was in college, um I was doing so much. And at the time, you know, I had an opportunity where I had a part-time job at night working for a bank. And they could part-timers, no, full-timers could leave the same time as part-timers and paid full-time. So I decided I was going to go full-time. Silly me, when I decided to go full-time, the stock market crashed, right? I was an electrical engineering major. Uh -huh. I was taking 24 credits. I had scholarship and I was getting home at wee hours in the morning uh -huh. and I crashed that, 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 that semester. Right. Hit rock bottom. You know, I was killing myself. And I did this, for, tried to do this for at least two semesters, right? Where I was starting off full time and not finishing my credits. So I went on, on, um, whatchamacallit, what they call that, um, academic probation. Because you cannot keep right. dropping your, your credits. I went into my dean's office one day to see what my deal was. And on that deal, on that, on that desk, bad planning on your part does not constitute an emergency on mine. Oh. Always remember that. So as you build your brand, oh. right? The understanding again, bad planning on bad your planning part. on your part does not constitute an emergency on my part. Wow. That's what my dean had on her desk. And I always remember that. That what you decide to put into your brand, and if you decide not to execute it properly because you didn't plan properly, then you should expect what you get out of it. Right? So the choices you make. In building your brand, if you don't have a plan that 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 you've gone through and you know you've tried to do certain things in yeah. order to execute that plan, right? You have to know you have to take your time. That's why I say patience, patience, iterations, right? You learn, you go back to the board, you go to the next step, you know, you learn from what you did before, you know, feedback, failures, whatever. And you keep rising to the top with your brand. Yes, yes. No? Because eventually you will rise. Um, I talk about this all the time where I say the test of life will show up to stop you, to delay you, to block you. Mm -hmm. If you keep passing and keep going through, eventually something will happen. They call it the push. You know, when they say pray until something happens, something will eventually happen. Mm -hmm. Period. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, good, bad, or indifferent, right? Yep. I always try to say to people, find the positive side to things. Yes. If you sit back and focus on the negative, it's just going to keep you down, right? Yes. So I always try to tell individuals that energy comes in to this potential, uh, sorry, this kinetic and potential energy. Right. I, I failed science back in. Um... <laughs> so kinetic energy okay, wait, is wait. that energy that's in motion, right? <laughs> Potential energy is that energy that's stored, right? Mm -hmm. In the human condition, when Char is having these types of um, sessions, yes. I call this the kinetic energy. It's that energy in motion that builds you up shakes you up, gets you, you know, and when you are exchanging this energy, it's the most awesome thing. It's like when you go to that church service on Sunday and the, the preacher hits home on a choir singing, yes. <clears throat> you find yourself all lifted, you're uplifted, you're excited, right? When you go against these naysayers that are being negative and they want to talk bad, whatever, yeah. this, this, and that, and oh, your brand, oh my God, this, this, blah, blah, blah. Listen, Tell them thank you, right? When you come across those negative people who want to put down your thing, tell them thank you. Because yeah. when you 
allow their negative energy to pull away and take away your energy, mm-hmm. you're, they're just trying to bring you down. We don't yes. want that. Yes. You reverse engineer that negative energy and you transfer because energy is never destroyed. It's transferred, right? Oh, oh, energy is never destroyed. It is, it is a transference. Transferred. So no, ma- we, no matter what the energy is, you're going to transfer it. Either they're trying to bring you up, pull you down. Yes. You as that individual... Mm-hmm. You have to get to the point where you don't allow someone to pull you down and pull your energy down. Got to block. That takes time. It's not something that happens overnight. Right. You know? Right. It takes maturity and time to see the good, the bad and the ugly and decide, all right, you know what? Hmm. You said something about my brain that I didn't like, but you know what? Let me look at this. Let me look at this. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's. Learning how to be more, more proactive in your approach. Uh-huh. And when you start seeing positive from negative, right? Mm-hmm. It's only, it's only going to build you up, right? But we are human, right? But we have to surround ourselves with positive, you know, points of energy, right? Yeah. Cause of the world, you know, whatever gives you that upliftment, if it's working out, whatever, right? All part of that in regards to, you know, as you build your brand, you're going to come across, you know, a lot of naysayers, right? And believe it or not, some of your hardest critics are going to come from family, right? Yeah. So sometimes you need to step away, take a breather, right? And if it is coming from them, you know, you got to, you know, find your quiet moment to have that moment of peace, yeah. right? Peace. You have to, yeah. you have to have that moment of peace. And find the things that give you a level to keep yourself balanced. Okay. Right. And right. if you if you're not finding that balance, then you know, mm, take that spa trip, man. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm gonna say you have to have some type of routine for yourself. I think That's whatever so that looks like, you know, I was talking to um on a to someone else in one of my the show with another guest. And I said, for me, like even in the middle of the day, what I love to do sometimes, even though it's cold, is just step outside for a minute and let the breeze hit get me. Get their fresh air hitting you. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. that has will change it. Like something happens. Mm-hmm. Like the breeze hit me, the fresh air hits me, and I'm, mm-hmm. I feel alive again. I feel your, ready to go. That's your natural air bath. <laughs> yes. Ooh, I'm ready. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, you know, find yeah. something. Let me find, Carl, you sound like you had a coach because right now you dropping a lot of nuggets. <laughs> so what's interesting, I'm going to tell you this, because yeah. as you, I'm a seeker of knowledge, right? Uh-huh. And, you know, somebody, you know, my, 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 my business partner that um, started the awards program with, he went, he, um, went to Lincoln University. And he said going to Lincoln saved his life because it took away from the craziness that he was dealing with as a as a youth growing up in Flatbush, right? Because right? uh-huh. he lost his best childhood friend to gun violence, right. Right? right? And he could have been with him that day when that situation happened, right? Mm-hmm. And he, he, he got into his fraternity, um, started doing um, music entertainment. He was managing, um, I'm not going to name the, the, the group, but, you know, at the time, a, a premier R&B group. You know? uh-huh. And when I came, when we partnered up, what was interesting was um, when you're building your brand, you're going to have to make decisions, hard decisions, mm. right? As to who you're going to do business with and why. Right? Tell me about it. Your partnerships are going to change because people change, times change, circumstances change. So always be ready that your partnership, don't be afraid to walk away from things. Yes. And people. And people. Because, and 
he actually had his own promotional team that he was working with. Mm -hmm. But when he came across with me, our personalities came together and our energies got up. Right. And made us compatible, right? Uh Uh-huh. Not unequally yoked, compatible, right? To allow us to see how we would work together in a team format, right? Mm. Key thing, brand management, planning. You've heard it before. There's no I in team. There's the acronym together. Everyone achieves more when we talk about from the team structure. Yeah. 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 Do not be afraid. A lot of people think that, you know, doing a brand means that it's all about them. True leaders know how to build great teams. Right. And you need to have that mindset where you're willing to learn from others. Right. Right. Number one, learn and be trainable. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If you're not willing to be trainable, then it's going to be hard for you to adjust to change. Right. It works for some, doesn't work for all. Right. 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 So when you focus on your brand, yeah, these things are, and Char, you know me, when it came to my awards program, I was very stubborn in regards to individuals telling me this, 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 and this. Can I just pause right there for a minute? And stubborn is a nice word. Shala, you got, I feel the pain that you feel. Every year. Stubborn, no Carl, no Carl, pain. stubborn. Let's, no but I'm going a, I'm to a pull out the positive from this right now. He finally admitted this. Been admitted. <laughs> it's, been. It's, it's on video. I'm, it's recorded. Hey, I'm going to keep pressing play back. Heard, I've told my team many times, I cannot do this awards by myself. <laughs> However, there is things that I see that I would like to get done. But at the same time, uh, in order for me to build the awards brand properly, I must be willing to adapt to change. Yes. And adapt to other ways of looking at it. Looking at it and other ideas because when it's time for you that you, and congratulations, by the way, making that awards program the sought after annual awards program for young gifted and black entrepreneurs mm-hmm. we thank you for that awards program you're on your 17th year mm-hmm. see that means you are definitely doing something right and i know we are also starting this ygb on the move i will be interviewing some of your honorees i can't wait to tap tons into- of great stories yes i can't wait to tap into that so guess what we have for the new year there's going to be some amazing amazing guests um, showing up, giving their knowledge. We got over 300 knowledge. of them to throw at you. So be ready. <laughs> you, can, you can have a season one, season two, and season, season three. three. <laughs> so I'm excited about that, but um, not mm-hmm. to cut you. Go ahead. because And you're going to talk about networking soon. So here's the thing. So um, the best way I could introduce networking to you, because I'm, I'm so big on networking, right? Yes, you are. Once you've gotten... The handle on how you want your brand to work, yeah. design, feel, look, taste, whatever it is that identifies your brand, right? Right. How are you going to get it marketed? That's one, right? Who's going to identify with this? Mm-hmm. Right? Right. Well, talk about your brand. Who are you going to meet to shake hands to say, hey, I got this awesome idea, right? Right. Networking is your ability to expand your horizon by pulling in resources in a whole lot of different areas. Right. right? Um, Whether you need the lawyer side of it, you need the product side, you need development side of it, you know, you need to establish your network. and. The best way I can I, the best way I could talk about this, I'll give you the example of um, when I graduated college, right? Um, 
I was, I was two months to get my degree. I was working for Chase in their, in one of their financial ops group. And it was in a, a trading group and there was only one black trader on the desk. He was um, a graduate from Michigan University, right? And he, he was probably on the wrestling team, I think at the time. And um, part of networking is getting your interpersonal skills in order. Interpersonal meaning knowing how to work with others, right? Mm, right. And so, you know, the union of having minorities is always that piece. But when you are trying to advance yourself, you want to seek out like-mindedness, yeah. right? Yes. So his name was Nigel. Nigel came to me and I thought he was asking me a trick question, right? Mm-hmm. He said, yo, bro, when you, when you get your degree, what are you going to do? So what Nigel asking me right now? So in my mind, I was so caught up with, well, the American dream. I'm going to get my degree yeah. and I'm going to be able to get a better job. He said, well, how are you going to do that? I said, Nigel, you asking me, man. Right. No. <laughs> because the American dream says if I get my degree, right. I'm supposed to be able to get a better job of, of higher education. You know, I want to be more, you know. So, uh, you know, you could, I could sell myself even more because I have this degree. He went, no, that's not how it works. He threw me. Let me tell you something. This hat blew off my head. I was like, Nigel, what are you, what are you doing? About. You know? Nigel said, Carl, there are programs here in this company that will put you on a fast track into management and take you off the, the direction that you're going in. You just need to apply to them. All of the companies, they have diversity programs and uh-huh. management, management leadership. And you know this, Char. They yeah. have um, management development programs where companies, they want the top of the best of the Ivy Leagues, of the top schools, with it, Columbia, NYU, you know, UCLA. They go across the, and they do all of this, this um, recruiting and diversity recruiting to right. get because they want to see those degrees on their walls for their relationship management, right? Right. And they have these programs on every product area of a company, whether it's in technology, banking, finance, you know, you go down the line, operations, they have these things, right? right? And he put me into a mindset that I was like, whoa, I was like, I was that wind up toy once he was done with me. Mm-hmm. So what I did, I went and networked with my senior management, right? Hey, Willie, Al, I want to do this. What? Yeah, Carl. Because when I when I was in those um, op groups, I always wanted to be the person, that guy that got the work done, that knew it all. I wanted right. to understand how it worked from accounting to billing to X, Y, Z, you know? Right. So I was, so when I met with Alan and Willie, they told me, boom, got their recommendations, recommendations. Remember that word? Recommendations, referrals. Got their recommendations. I turned around and um, I was a team lead on my team. So I had management trainees that was coming through their track. Right. That they would have to sit and train with me. I got their recommendations. So the network continued. I was like, yeah, you know, yeah. they nominated, you know, wrote, got their letters, put my whole thing together. Right. Thought I was ready. Got my resume because I was taking these courses. I was ready. And I put my application in. Then they called me and they said, so interviewed me. Everything's asked me all the questions that I could answer. I answered. <laughs> Came back, Willie and Al asked me, Cody Woman Management, hey, Carl, what happened to that uh, that program that you, you know, the ops program you said? I said, um, I don't know, let me follow up. So when I followed up, I got an answer and it said, I needed more experience in managing, but it's a management trainee call. Right. What are you talking about? Right. Now, I'm not going, I'm just going to some history. Back then in my time, being inside of that company, was a 5% chance of being an internal 
getting into the program if you was not magna cum laude. Oh, me. Lord. And if you was not magna cum laude and going to a top 10 school, I went to City University of New York, right? That percentage dropped from 5 to 2%, right? Wow. Then add that you were minority, that 2% went to less. The 0.5. The reason I bring that up was that was my slap in the face or my my moment to be benched. Yeah. I yeah. But I didn't decide to bench. Right. I decided to learn. And what I said in the end of my interviews with any of them was, what do I need to do better? Right. And I went into this cycles char of talking and meeting different execs and people across the com- company right. that I moved from different groups, got bigger recommendations, didn't go after the same one again. I went after the credit finance. I kept going, going technology programs. Yeah. Uh, you know, I started taking master's courses in this, you know, I started taking the advice of different people, building out my network, Right started talking to people outside of the company, you know, having conversations that um, would help me define how I would approach situations, right? Yeah. Every time I got hit down, I kept coming back harder, stronger. Right, right. right? But I surrounded myself with a business network of individuals. Wow. Never stopped it. Never got into a program, but guess what I did? In that time, I had done levels of training within Chase, right? That allowed me to get into business systems analysis and project management on their dime, on the information systems. I wasn't even part of information systems. Right. But I did those trainings, right? And I was able to change my direction of being financial services driven to be more information systems driven. And I was 27 years old, making $37,500. <laughs> 375 is always at five. In there. <laughs> but was able to double my salary with a next position based on the knowledge that I took in my right. that I, my next job got me 65K. Woo, go call. Age 27 going on 28. Wow. So, you know, I had to go get the Bimmer, Black Man's Wish, you know. You went and bought a car? Nah, at least <laughs> it. but it was a brand new lemon. It was 21 and gave me the most headache over three years. Not to say this, but during that time, my direction skyrocketed. I started getting to events outside of the company. Right. You know, I started doing big events in New York and it built my network even more. See, a lot of people in the promotional game, I always ask, where are you taking your audience or what are you pulling from them? Mm -hmm. My thing was always about what do, how do we connect them? How do we draw services back to them? Right. What What are you doing in order for you to go to that next level with your product or service? Right. You have to network. You have to step out of your comfort zone. When I walk into a room and I start back with the brand management, you are your brand. Yes. Back in those times, we didn't have social media. No, we didn't. So you needed to know, and I stress this so much, you need to know how to sell yourself. It is in a way you position, present, and posture yourself to, you know, get individuals to believe in who you are. Right. Some people have the gift of gab, but if you don't have it, you have to find the things that sell you. Right. Right. So I used to be like, um, my approach is, listen, I'm old school. If I don't have a business card, give me that tissue. Right. Right. We're going to talk about certain things. Right. I need to know, you know, who does what, the five W's, who, what, where, when, and why, right? 
And as I started building this Rolodex, I would go into rooms and I would come out. I have, I got 10 fingers. Five is good. 10 is even better. Yeah. So if you're building your network, when you go into a room, observe the room. Look at the room and see what's going on in that room. Yeah. Right. Right. Don't be afraid to come out of your comfort zone. And that's what a lot of people don't do when it comes to expanding themselves. You know, a simple hello is, hey, how are you? Yeah, right. I'm fine. Right. Well, are you enjoying yourself? Da, 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 da. I call it the speed round. It only takes about less than five minutes to say, hey, you know what? Do you mind exchanging business cards with me? Could be simple like that. Right. Like, sure. You take their business card, you see what they are, and then say, oh, can this person be someone I can, you know, um, utilize down the line if I have a, you know, whatever it is, Brandon, I'm selling and You know, maybe they're an accountant, right? And I need to ask some advice or whatever. But don't be afraid to go into a room and attack the room. Don't be attack overly the aggressive. Room. Attack the room. Take, take charge in the sense of, I came in here for a purpose. This is what I'm coming up. Right. right, right. Get those 10 business. Start building your Rolodex of, um, of individuals or service providers or vendors, whatever it is. And this goes along the line across, whether it's in a networking forum or you just happen to go to a uh, trade show or if you, you know, it all depends on what you're doing. Right. Right. But you you go to these trade shows, you go you network events, you you're out socially. What's on your mind is how am I networking? What am I getting out of it? You know? You are the master networker because somehow my life was you have managed to have Eric Adams, our New York City mayor, like in your Rolodex. <laughs> hey. Might be on speed dial or something. You know, he shows up to your events, which is amazing. I don't know how you pull that off. I'm going to tell you a funny story. How did y'all meet? Hold on. Eric and I have never exchanged numbers. What? And he's at your events? And we're at zero degrees of separation. Wow. Right? And the the reason is, is that my childhood friend is, is one of his closest confidants who, oh, I love it. Being that, and again, it's the network. It's Every, network. Everyone in the political arena that's oh. in New York City has either heard of my name or I know them personally. Right. You know, you know, you know Congresswoman Yvette Clark. Yes. Letitia James. These are individuals that have been in my circles or, you know, Senator Kevin Parker Kevin was playing basketball with us back in Vanderveer Park back in the day. We was like, what are you doing over here, son? You know? <laughs> Yvette Diane Clark, she was in our parties hanging out. Letitia James, all of them. Every right. last one of them was in things. And we watched them, but they stayed connected with us and we stayed connected with them. You know? Right, right. And um, the beautiful thing is over the years of knowing them, and I'm talking 20 plus years of friendships with some of them, you know? Yeah. So 30. So like with Eric Adams, you know, the marketing for YGB was out there. We are touching all different people. Yes, you are. Because of our, it's a lifestyle program. Yeah. And when this program, I used to keep it in the city, right? I remember you started in the city. It was, it started in the city and we was keeping the black ties and um, events in the city. And then I moved it to Brooklyn and Eric was Brooklyn Borough president. Right. And it only made sense that the Brooklyn Borough president needs to be at YGB. And he has been a supporter of us over the four or five years um, now that we moved it, had moved it to Brooklyn, you know? So, and that's through good networking, right? And having good, because it's, it's, you know, we, we talk zero degrees, we talk one degree, whatever. But I always say to anyone, I'm always maybe one person off from meeting who I want to see. Ooh, love it. One person off. I love it. 
And that's my confidence. God rest his soul, one of my very good friends who was one of my first YGB honorees, his name is Rohan Clark. Rohan um, was uh, owner of Hot Pot Caribbean Restaurant in Harlem. Unfortunately, uh, due to acts of violence, you know, um, home invasion, his wow. life was taken. But at my first awards, I watched Rohan, um, and I'm saying Rohan, but it's more Ruan, you know. Ruan, Jamaican. I was about to say, you pronouncing it, you know, <laughs> Ruan people, it's Ruan. <laughs> you know, that was that was a brother to me. Yeah. And at my first awards, he saw me bring together in a small restaurant so many people who were at each other, but they came together on that day to celebrate Black History Month with me. Yeah. And he cried because I gave him his first ever award. I watched that man go up on stage and he teared up. And his biggest thing was, Carl, you are the ultimate networker. Because Char, if you are with me and I, somebody comes up that I'm going to give you the best introduction ever. Right. I might, I might throw some nonsense in it, but I'm going to introduce you guys because the chain and is as strong as weakest link. And it was uh, Senator Marty Markowitz. Marty had became, um, he was uh, the former Brooklyn Borough president at one point. Mm -hmm. And he started the Black Men's of Distinction Awards, where my publicist, when it came about, it was to identify people in the community that they wanted to highlight. So she identified myself, right? And it was an awesome program. It actually took some of the elements from that when I decided to do YGB, right? And um, one of the key things was pass the torch on. Don't let it just, the light dim with you. Right. Which is what I say to all my YGBs, honorees, is to pass, listen, the torch. pass the torch. Let me know about somebody else that's doing great things. Because at the end of the day, it's about building the family, building the brand, building the network, and we grow. You water the seed. You do whatever you need to do to let it grow, blossom, and you reap the benefits of your of your work. Right? I love that. And you know what? With that being said, it's a nice, beautiful and to all this wealth of knowledge that Carl gave us today about branding and networking. And I've been passing the torch to you with this show. <laughs> My life warriors, I am bringing all these wonderful people of color together um, through my Dear Life Warriors Network just to do that, to make sure that everyone, the light's not dim. You get to a view and a window into people's story mm -hmm. like Carl. Carl is gracious enough to come back and teach us about branding, networking, um, a lot of great nuggets that I'm going to have to highlight um, for you individually, because these are some amazing, amazing tips about branding and marketing and networking. Let me say this one piece yeah. Tom, for my late mom. And this goes to social media. I have nothing against social media. Social media is necessary considering today's time, right? Yeah. However, I said to someone, my mom back in the day said to me, social media is taken away from us picking up the phone to call and have a conversation. Yeah. There's a difference when you have a conversation mm -hmm. with someone mm -hmm. versus you assume that they're following you to know what's happening in your daily trek. Right. So as part of the networking approach, do not be lazy in your approach to just simply pick up the phone one day to say, hey, I'm just reaching out just to touch base, right? It means a lot. I'm yeah. telling you, it means a lot to hear a voice versus to be a keyboard gangster, right? Makes So don't allow social media to take away from that personal touch. Yeah. All right. Yes. Thank you. That's very much true. And I'm in your category, age category, where I too am a firm believer on that personal touch, that phone call, that everything. So thank you for saying that, Carl. All right. And with that being said, my life warriors, 
I am signing off. Carl is signing off with his Brooklyn hat. Yeah, New York. New York all York, the way, New Brooklyn. 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 So okay. <laughs> So do know that there is a coach out here that really and truly loves you. 